Hello, everyone. My name is Marcelo Lopes, and it's a pleasure for me to present at this year's ASN Kidney Week conference. Today, I'll be presenting a CKID app study that looks at a, a real world longitudinal analysis of anemia medication prescriptions in non dialysis dependent chronic kidney disease patients. These are our disclosures. The study has the following objectives. We wanted to know how often is anemia treated. Do patient's characteristics matter? Is anemia medication management started in the right moment, or is it too late in terms of iron deficiency and CKD stage? Also, we wanted to look at pattern of medication prescriptions and switches within a year. As a background, Anemia in non-dialysis-dependent CKD is very common. In the U.S., the prevalence of hemoglobin less than 12 grams per deciliter is 46% for CKD stage 4 and 72% for CKD stage 5. Iron deficiency is the norm. Looking at T-set under 20% and ferritin under 100, around 30% of CKD stages four and five patients have both iron deficiency parameters and around 50 percent have either one of those and lack of anemic care before end stage renal disease is common at hemodialysis initiation and also associated with elevated mortality a bit of background about the chronic kidney disease outcomes and practice pattern study it is a prospective cohort of adult CKD stages three to five patients followed in nephrology clinics in these five countries. In this analysis, we looked at data from Brazil, Germany, and the US. So our target population was derived from these three countries. These were CKD stages three to five patients with hemoglobin less than 12. We excluded patients who lacked clinical information at baseline or during follow-up, and patients who received anemia medication at baseline. A sample constituted of 2,818 anemia medication naive patients. 708 of these had a prescription of anemia medications during follow-up. These are the new users, and 2,000 110 did not use any medication during follow-up. These were the never users. Here we show the cumulative incidence curves for anemia medication starts. We stratify this by baseline hemoglobin. As you can see, the red line indicates patients with hemoglobin less than 10. I also want to point out that the y-axis goes up to only 30%. So the majority of patients with low hemoglobin do not receive any anemia medications. 40% of patients with hemoglobin less than 10 were prescribed within a year. That was even less for patients with hemoglobin less than 12, which was 18%. Here we show the cumulative incidence by t set and ferritin, red line indicating the iron deficient patients. Most of Patients who are deficient do not receive iron therapy. Around 25% will receive oral iron and 10% IV iron. For patients who start ESAs, they usually have a higher T-set and ferritin levels. Here by CKD stage, most patients who are even in the later stages of CKD, they do not receive anemia medications. Here is the cumulative incidence by uh, hemoglobin and diagnosis of heart failure at baseline. Sol solid lines indicating patients with hemoglobin less than 12. Dotted lines indicating patients with hemoglobin greater or equal to 12. The red line indicates patients with heart failure. So for our iron, independent of hemoglobin levels, patients with heart failure, they are started more often on oral iron. For ESAs, only the anemic patients have um, more, are started more often on this medication. And due to the low number of prescriptions, IV, there is no difference 
for IV iron prescriptions. We show the treatment patterns during follow-up. At baseline, you can see that 49% of patients are started on oral iron, 14% on IV iron only, and 29% on ESA only. During follow-up, considerable proportion of patients are dropped from treatment. And as you can see in the mean hemoglobin, it seems that patients who are no longer on treatment are being dropped due to the achievement of hemoglobin targets. In the end, nearly a third of patients are no longer on anemia medication treatment at one year. We show country differences for anemia management. IV iron is started at a higher mean hemoglobin in Germany, 11.2, than in Brazil, 10.4, and the US, 10.2. A lower proportion of patients who are started on IV iron in Germany have iron deficiency. So looking at T-sets under 20%, 61% in Germany have this um, parameter compared to 82% in the US, which is much higher. Ferritin less than 100 is a proportion of 48% of patients in Germany versus 58% in the US. New users of ESAs in the US have lower hemoglobin at time of initiation, 9.6, than in Germany, 10.2, and in Brazil, 10.9. Parenteral therapies are more frequent in Germany, 56% of new users than in other countries, which are around 44% of new users in Brazil and the US. In conclusion, this analysis of non-dialysis dependent CKD patients followed in clinics enrolled in the CKDOPS study showed that only a small proportion of patients are started on anemia medications, even at hemoglobin levels less than 10 grams per deciliter. Patients with iron deficiency are not started on iron replacement therapy. Only a quarter received oral iron and 10% IV iron. Patients with heart failure are more likely to be treated promptly for anemia. Medications are started at the later stages of CKD. Oral iron is the most frequent medication used. However, in Germany, parental therapies are more frequent. A third of new users are no longer on anemia medications after 12 months of the initial prescriptions. These results provide longitudinal data supporting the concept that anemia is suboptimally tr treated among patients with non-dialysis dependent CKD. And these data point to an opportunity for enhanced detection and improved management of CKD anemia.